Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary on the 1st of October will be low keyed. President Ahmed Bola Tinubu says this is to reflect the mood of the nation with the current economic challenges. At an interministerial press briefing ahead of the anniversary, government officials were positive that the federal government's renewed hope agenda will soon start yielding the expected results, Arise News correspondent Wenga Shiru reports. Same like yesterday, as the nation makes another turn on the page, Nigeria at 64 perhaps makes a significant milestone with a quarter of a century of broken democracy. It nevertheless comes with torrid emotions as the nation navigates one of its most stormy phases and the struggle to find its place as a leading force in the African continent. With strong indications of an imminent cabinet shakeup, and a corresponding presidential directive of a low-key independence anniversary, the telltale signs that the president is unhappy with the current state of the nation. Perhaps in a race for political survival, some of President Tinumbu's ministers are here again in another strong defense of the government's interventions in their bid to ensure Nigerians catch the vision of the president's renewed hope agenda. Following the removal of the petroleum subsidy, President Tinubu is gradually guiding Nigeria into an unprecedented energy transition phase, launching a presidential initiative to move the country from fossil fuels to compressed natural gas CNG as a fuel for vehicles and machinery. With the recent ratification of the National Values Charter by the Federal Executive Council, the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation will now commence the implementation of the Charter in line with the President's commitment. As the Secretary to the Government of the Federation takes the floor, it swings immediately into explaining the two extant policies of the Tinumbu administration, which are the reversal of the fuel subsidy and flotation of the Naira. Senator Akume reminds Nigerians of President Tinumbu's promise to hand over a banner on sting to the yet unborn generation. This garment of President Mohamed Tinubu, His Excellency, GC Empire, is very much aware of and deeply sympathizes with all Nigerians over the economic conditions we are passing through. This has been occasioned by unavoidable policy choices, including the removal of poor subsidy that his administration has had to make. Other ministers also seized the opportunity to brief Nigerians on what has been done in other key sectors of the economy. This administration inherited a total of 2,600 projects with a total cost of 13 trillion. And of course, you should understand you know, the level we were before we floated the Naira and of course the fuel subsidy. And so you can imagine what inflation would have done. And so what we are doing is to select a number of projects in 2025 that are ongoing. We do not intend to start new projects. No better time for the nation to reflect on its journey towards its political future at 64. As it transverses a most stormy and turbulent phase, it underscores its resilience to emerge as a leading force in the Africa's continent. Today, the masses wait in better bread to get the gains of its hard-fought democracy. From the National Press Center, Abuja, Benga Ashiru, Arise News. Thank you, Benga Ashiru, for that report. We're now being joined by Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So as Nigeria marks its uh, 64 years of independence, come next week, Tuesday, October 1, it's a time for reflection, right? It is. Uh, Tinubu's administration is emphasizing that unity and resilience during this anniversary. In your view, what are some of the key areas where Nigeria has thrived and where it has struggled the most when it comes to living up to its uh, democracy? Well, that's a, um, a very complicated <laughs> question. <coughs> it seems simple, but also complicated because indeed, it is time for reflection. Let's begin by saying that um, the Secretary to the uh, Government, Mr. George Akume, did uh, say that the 
you know, celebrations will be low-key, as instructed by President Bola Tinubu, the reasons are clear. Uh, with an underperforming economy and the prevailing economic conditions in the country, it makes more sense to have a modest commemoration, you know, and be sensitive to what is going on in the country. And so let's look at what uh, Mr. George Akume also said in his statement, which relates to what you have just um, asked. He said, and I quote, the program of events has been designed to remind us of our strength when we stay united, our progress despite the challenges, the beauty of our diversity. You know, in case I come to your question, our diversity and unity. It's supposed to be a blessing for the country, but 64 years on, it's still a huge source of friction. And the reason is that it's been poorly managed by you know, the country, by the so-called leaders up to now. And when you look at the government that uh, the SGF serves, the All Progressive Congress, let's just look at from about, about nine years now, they have been in power. How have they managed this diversity when they are asking Nigerians to be united? Look back at former President Muhammad Buhari when the APC came into power. Um, it, it was a government that was parochial in nature, provincial in nature, and lacked a nationalistic outlook. And we saw it in their actions, in their policies, in the appointments they made. And that caused a lot of division within Nigeria. And then you have a new government almost, you know, over one year in government, President Bola Tinubu. It seems that nothing has changed dramatically. If you have a government that is not that nationalistic, in outlook, but all the time ask Nigerians to be mindful of the unity of the country. You cannot wish unity. You know, you have to be able to manage it carefully in order to get the kind of results that we are looking for. So this celebration or the commemoration of 64 years of Nigeria's independence really calls for deep reflection, as you have, as you have noted, and a review of what we have, doing, have been doing so far. Yes, there are bright spots here and there. Nigerians are brilliant people, you know, all over the world, or even within the country, personally, on an individual basis. When you give them the chance, when you give them the opportunity, they excel, they do well, they are brilliant. But when it comes to leadership, when it comes to politics, we are still struggling to get it together, and that's where the focus needs to be. Because when you solve the political problems, then you can have a breathing space to do well in other sectors of the country. Yeah, Constance, well, uh, you spoke spoken well. You talked about diversity, inclusivity. Uh, so one can say we're still here. Nigeria is still together. So you could say uh, that is something to celebrate. Uh, in order not to say, let's not even celebrate at all because of what is on ground. For example, the government talked about CNG. It's nowhere to be seen. You know, the government talked about, uh, I mean, when Akume was speaking, it talked about uh, SMEs. SMEs are practically dying. Yesterday we discussed the issue of a comrade in Lagos saying that when you reduce working hours from uh, uh, five days a week to two days, it seems that, that your policies are failing. And then we talked about the spiraling effect it has. And then you talk about the, the, what would what what Nigerians would most likely want to hear is that the, the bloated government would reduce. You know, first things first. Perception is key. I don't know what your sense of all the things that are said. Even though yes, we're still here, and Nigeria is still here, and Nigerians are making waves across across seas abroad and all that, even at home here, uh, Constance. Well. <laughs> There are challenges, and um, it's possible to also tackle the challenges. It depends on the vision of the government in power. In, in, in the light of trying to review what we're going through, when you read the Guardian report this morning, it's a brilliant uh, you know, report. It simplifies what the country is passing through. It talks about several things. When he has a cartoon you know, of the president lying down, and he mentions the insecurity, the power, the inflation, the poverty, the corruption, the fuel crisis, every of this item are areas where we are struggling and areas where people feel the government so far has failed woefully. And they are expecting and hoping that they're able to turn it around. And let's connect that to 
the cabinet reshuffle that we were discussing yesterday, the president has indicated that, you know, he's going to move around his team in order to see whether he can breathe in, you know, new energy and fresh perspective, you know. So people are looking forward to that to see whether there will be a positive change in the coming months or in the coming years because he has about three years to go. I mean, the, the, the SGS spoke about the quantum leap of this administration that it has taken in a short uh, period of time. It talks about a beacon of a better future. Yes, you can aspire to a better future, but again, you have to work towards it. If you do not put, the, uh, put in the work, um, there's, no need, there's no way it's going to happen. So I think um, deep reflections to be had today um, and in the coming days concerning where we are, the state of affairs of the country, and we are hoping that the leaders are able to, um, to get it together. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Ikoko.